is estimated to have more than 400 million young people below the age of 30, accounting for a third of China's population. That is equal to more than the entire working population of the United States and Western Europe combined. The young generation has grown up in a China unknown to their parents, one marked by extraordinary levels of economic growth, exposure to Western culture, and access to new technologies. As Youth Day in China falls on May 4th, CGTN is airing a 10-episode series called The New Generation, discussing how China's young people are reacting to the rapidly changing world. Chinese President Xi Jinping has urged students to have firm faith, to nurture virtue, study hard, and work to become individuals with ideals, ability, and a strong sense of responsibility. So what are the core values embraced by the Chinese young people, and what are some of the stereotypes types that they'd like to burst. How are they different from the older generations and from their peers abroad? Welcome to this special edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin. I'm joined in our Beijing studio by three young people living in China. Anastasia Sukhoreskaya, a Russian student of international journalism and editor at People.cn, the website of People's Daily. Ai Li, a Chinese author, commentator and online celebrity. And last but not least, Zhou Wing, a reporter with CGT who participated in the series I just mentioned. Before we start our conversation, let's check out the story that Zoin did. Coming to this English school for ELTS training has become a weekend routine for Ren Yishu of the past few months. For her, it's great help in bringing her one step closer to realizing a dream she's had since she was a teenager. I set the goal of studying abroad as early as in junior high school and have started to pave the way since then. For instance, I applied and was admitted into university in Beijing, where China's best resource of education is clustered. I also tried to enrich my resume by doing voluntary work in Indonesia and taking various English tests. And such high demand for training courses among the youth has propelled the sector to become one of the fastest growing industries in China. And this has also pushed Zhang Wei, a famed veteran reporter, to join the English language training sector. Zhang told us that the market continues to grow about 30 percent annually, and not only that, he has witnessed some new trains coming along with the tide. So people are not only focused on how to get higher scores in tests, they also pay a lot of attention to how to be more competitive, more competent uh, in a globalized world. Uh, for example, how to not only survive, but also thrive in a Western-style academic environment, for example, in American colleges. They also want to be more competent in a future working environment. Most of Ran Wei's students are like Zhen Yi Shu, who were born after the 1990s and also known in China as the post-90s generation. This generation is born and raised in a time when the country's material life has become much more affluent. Globalization is on the fast track and internet a given. They have no memories of the country's hardships and tend to be labeled as spoiled, lazy and selfish. But Ran Wei disagrees with the stereotype. We, the post-90s, have lots of choices brought about by the change of the overall environment. But every one of us still needs to choose the right path for ourselves. What I feel really proud about is the post-90s around me know what they want to pursue, and then they make feasible plans to make it happen. Recently, Ren Yishu received an offer from one of her dream schools in the UK. Her efforts and hard work have made her long-awaited seed of hope grow to fruition. And this is also a story echoed by many of the post-90s generation in China whose perseverance has made dreams a reality. So Yun, CGTN, Beijing. Wow, what an interesting group of people there. So uh, welcome to the studio and uh, look forward to this interesting discussion. Zoe, uh, what do you think is the biggest stereotype that these young people that you interviewed want to break away from? I think the greatest stereotype is that the older generation or like the generation of the parents think they don't work as hard. Because I was born in the 1980s, maybe the similar mm. with you guys. So and when I grow up, I feel the same stereotype because we're the first generation 
uh, of the one-child policy. So it's even greater zero type compared with the post-90s. And my, my, my parents just think that we don't study, uh, we don't work as hard as them. And I think I understand why they have this kind of concept. Because for my dad, like he went to college in 1978, which is the second year China resumed the mm -hmm. college entrance examination. So at that time, like she wor uh, he worked in the daytime and also worked very late with the dim candlelight. So because that college extreme. He it, might be telling the truth. Don't mm -hmm. you think he was saying the right thing? <laughs> it, it, he was it, working it, hard, he, harder of than course, you. Of course, because that is the only like beacon of light for him far, far away. And mm -hmm. the only but you think you work just as hard? Mm. I don't think I work that hard. <laughs> no, no, no. I think that's, that's, that's the reason. Mm. But, but that is because like we don't need to work that hard because we have so many different possibilities and also, you know, different experiences and chances. So maybe going to the college is not the only way we have mm. or taking part in the exams is not only the okay. only way. So which means we don't need to work as hard and because we have and the reason is we don't have we have a lot of, a lot more right. uh, possibilities compared with the mm. generation uh, the parents so, generation so yes. that is the first biggest stereotype that many people want to get rid right. of Eileen yeah. what is your observation well uh, I think most of the foreigners will think that the Chinese use a little bit shy or a little bit introvert especially when it comes to the international students people think that the Chinese students are not so confident when they present themselves in front of people but I think that's also one of the stereotypes the Chinese youth are trying to break away from. Now Chinese youth are getting much more confident and they are getting, you know, very, uh, have so much faith in themselves. So I think that's a very positive change I've seen in my students as well. I, I myself also a teacher working in one of these uh, organizations, New Oriental. So I can see my students, they are not only, you know, very superior on their marks, but also very confident. So I think that's a change. We're but on the other hand, uh, it is a paradoxical thing. I mean, yeah. you, you want to break away from the image of Chinese being inward looking and yes. being not uh, outspoken. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if you're fine with it, if it is not a stereotype, you can be, you know, quiet and, right. and have mm -hmm. no problem with it. Why yes. do we have to change ourselves? Do you think that is an issue here? Well, I don't think uh, people change themselves because of the stereotypes. I think it's just a natural process because okay. of the economic growth of the whole country. And and of uh, the better living standards. Well, today I have a very special day, really interesting, because in the morning I took a high-speed train to Shanghai, and on that train I had a live cast to millions of Chinese youth, because it's a very interesting holiday today, the youth day. Mm -hmm. And then I took the train back and to make it to this show, just in one day. 2,000 kilometers. 2,000 <laughs> kilometers in one day, and uh, the 4G signal on the train was just marvelous. So mm -hmm. uh, the, the live cast was amazing, the people on the train was amazing, Everything was great. That's why people are getting more and more confident, especially mm -hmm. the youth, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anastasia, your observation, since uh, you have been in China for seven yeah. years, mm -hmm. what's the biggest thing that strikes you as the, the, the stereotype that the Chinese people hate to, yeah. to be associated with? Right. Okay, so because I'm myself a student of international journalism and communication University of China, and um, according to my observations, for example, um, I'm studying on the Chinese program. So uh, my classmates are all Chinese. I'm the only foreigner in the class. And according to what I see, Chinese people are very, like, Chinese students are very, very, very hard working. They can spend, like, hours doing the presentation, like, writing essays and, and things like that. And actually, like, I'm, I'm, I'm really, like, looking up to them. So I'm learning from them to be as hard working as, as my classmates are. Um, and also, like, I wanted to comment about the possibilities that the Chinese people are open to nowadays. Um, for example, um, according, to, um, according to the older generation, um, for example, of our parents, of Russian parents, of the Chinese parents, uh, what a normal like, young pe person should do, they should graduate and get a normal job, let's mm -hmm. say, like a stable job, like stable position in one, like, in one company, let's say, be like People's Daily or like some other <laughs> company as well. And like for the parents, that's like, it seems like very solid, like very, very stable um, and very reliable. But for the younger generation, for example, they have other choices. Let's say they go for a startup business, they make their own company, yeah. or, for mm -hmm. example, they film the YouTube videos, mm -hmm. and then they earn like millions of yeah, dollars sure. and yuan. Mm -hmm. But for older generation, it seems not very stable, mm -hmm. stable right? Yeah. But not they very want serious. The younger people want to try new things. Mm -hmm. exactly. uh, also, the, in terms of lifestyle, uh, I have some interesting uh, graphics here. Let's take a look at this uh, uh, report that's released by McKenzie in 2017. That's called China Consumer Report, and it's study the behaviors of post-90s consumers and mm -hmm. they've characterized them into five groups and you're looking at them here now. The biggest is happiness seekers taking mm -hmm. up 39%, mm -hmm. okay? So people who just want to be happy. Mm -hmm. And then um, the, the second biggest group is success seekers who are quite the opposite. They do everything that to become successful mm -hmm. but they might not be very happy. And then you also have the 
third coming in the third the laid back people mm. who don't really care so much mm. who don't really are motive who are not really motivated by anything and then you have the spent thrifts who want to spend everything they mm -hmm. have and then finally you have the home birds who more or less rely on their parents um, what do you think of uh, this kind of characterization mm. and uh, how different is that between your parents generation for the parents generation probably it's all yeah, why the difference is so huge? Because first of all, they were born in a generation that is with material life is not so affluent. I think yes. that's the first thing. They have so much pressure of feeding food to us, right. like the babies, the families, that's the yes. first thing. And the second is, as I said, the, the possibilities. They don't have much possibilities. Right. Like for, for the generation of my parents, when they find a job, the only two questions is they can ask is what kind of job can I can you offer me the second like what kind of salaries you know the, the beneficiaries can you offer me that's mm. the two questions the younger generation like like us when we find a job we're like what kind of growth what kind of training can we get like what about the flexibility of the hours there are a lot more factors that can be considered right. taken into consideration so yes. there is this you know material material life work precondition for us to, to think about the cabinets right. or to, to be laid back or to, to, to think about what we really want to do. So there's a possibility. Right. Yes. So, and uh, the fact that the happiness seeker is coming on number one, right. is that a good yeah. thing or a bad thing, Ali? It is a <laughs> terrific thing, I think. Uh, well, uh, it's a symbol of the development of the country. The more people are, you know, focusing more on their own happiness rather than just simply getting successful. And I kind of disagree with this uh, status a little bit because I think sometimes people can be a happy success seeker. Right. Yeah, I'm, I think I myself is a happy Me success too, seeker, right? right? So yeah. I work and I do the job I love and then I, I can make my ends meet. And I think so many... You are lucky. Uh, I'm lucky, <laughs> but that's because the society gave me the chances. Well, let me give you another example. For example, I have a really good friend who is a professional gamer who play games mm -hmm. and earn millions of Chinese RMB just, you know, in a year. And I also have people who do the live cast of popular games. So they can, it's not possible when it's in pa my parents' generation. But now right. playing games can also be a very, very successful career. And profitable. they're happy, <laughs> yeah, and they're doing that. So I think, well, of course, that's because the country is getting better. So we have the opportunity. Mm. Otherwise, there's no way for us right, to do that. Right. Yeah. Anastasia, your observation of the yeah. picture? Well, actually, like, I wanted to say that, mm. okay, so just not only about the Chinese young people, but also about Russian, about, let's say, like, people, like, young people yeah. all over the yeah. world, especially yeah. those who come from the middle class families. Mm. I think the motto nowadays for those people who graduate from the universities or still in the universities can be uh, some, like, um, summed up by Confucius, who said, choose um, a job that you love and you will not have to work, like, a day in your life. Mm. So basically, this is what people are doing. Like they're loving, they, they love their job, maybe sometimes they even do not care much about the money, but they care about the experience. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, like, well, nowadays, the young people, they choose experience over things, um, and they choose uh, challenge over stability. But I'm surprised that the laybacks make up such a big group. Mm -hmm. Is that really the case? I mean, what is the explanation behind that group of people who just want to stay and, you know, at home and be comfortable? Is that really... Why there is such a big group there? I have actually the kind of similar question. I don't understand. But by laid back, they, you mean that they don't have a job; they just stay at home and well, well people who who are couch potatoes who yeah. are you know just rely on their parents and not working too well, hard. It means that their parents earn enough to help them to live that kind of yeah, lifestyle, maybe right? There is not a need for them. Yeah, there is no need for them. Urgency for them. Mm. To yeah. Them. So well, again, I think it's a good thing because it means that we have enough things to, for them to become laid back. So if you starve to death. I don't think you can be a laid-back. You cannot afford to be a laid-back. And I think yeah. it's, uh, it's not a bad thing because yeah. if you are always busy, busy, busy seeking mm. something, yes. there's right. no room for creativity, for, right. for thinking, that right, Anastasia? Mm. Yeah, I, among the Russian youth, <laughs> <laughs> how big um, do you think the percentage of laid-backs might be these days? Um, well, actually, um, okay, so let's say um, laid back can mm. be caused, okay, for example, like in China, by the wealth of the family. Mm. But sometimes a person is laid back not because he, his, his family is very wealthy, right. but because mm. he cannot find a job. Mm. So, like, for example, in countries where the economy is not, is not doing that great, as in China, for example, people, okay, let's say they graduate from the university and then they start seeking for the job mm. for a month, for two months, for half a year. Like, they cannot find one that they like. Mm. 
So mm. all that they have to do is maybe being laid back and then keep searching again and again and again. Mm. Well, I think the circumstances are also pretty hard, right, for, yes. the, right. for the young mm -hmm. people. I mean, when we graduated from university, uh, it was quite easy to mm -hmm. find a, a stable job. Right. Sometimes we were mm -hmm. given a job, right? Yes. We didn't have to look for it. And now, um, what kind of difficulties, let's talk a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, these millennials are faced with. So right. when you looking, when you d did the story, did mm -hmm. you feel that, you know, these young people really have to work really hard in this sense? Yeah, of course. It's become much more competitive. Mm. That's why you know, for so many young people, they're taking different training classes. Mm. Some are like task based um, yes. training because they want to go abroad to get their master's degree so that it's easier for them to get a job after graduation. But that's not even the case. You know, mm. nowadays, so many people are going so many, abroad right. and coming back. Yeah, right? it's, it's not becoming even an advantage. Mm. So that's the first thing. And the second is, uh, as I said, it's like uh, so many people, they, they, they have the pressure of finding a job, especially mm. a job that they, you know, they, they're, they feel ideal about. Yes. That's why there's a the data that only 40% of the people uh, born in 1990s can stay in a job longer than two years. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's because they can only find a temporary job and maybe they don't feel happy about it, just you know, hop to another one. So mm -hmm. that's also one of the phenomena that will become very popular mm -hmm. nowadays. It's, it's not all rosy for these millennials. It's not not really. Yeah, yeah, we're going to take a very short break and we'll be back right after this. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking about China's young people, and my guests are uh, Anastasia, Ailey, and Zhou Yun. Now, let's compare, try to compare mm. the young people in China and in, different con in other countries, for instance, in the West. Mm. Um, how, some people are saying the Chinese millennials, unlike their jaded American counterparts, are still dreamers and thrivers, and that they have the faith that they can achieve their dreams. Do you think that is uh, a d major difference? from your observation also as a, as a correspondent in the U.S. for right. a couple of years. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think like the difference is on that perspective, but I do feel at the beginning, I feel like the, the, the teenagers in the, in the States, they get mature like at an earlier age compared with the, uh, the, the kids in China. It's maybe because they, they're not the only child in their, in their family. So they, they, they learn to share, they learn to grow a little bit faster than the Ch Chinese kids. Mm -hmm. But after they get into the society or after they get into the college, it's like pretty much like they're on the same in page terms again. Of, in terms of the belief, the faith that they can achieve their dreams, mm. do you think there is a difference there that the Chinese see much more uh, hope, see much more, you know, um, progress, possibilities in their life? I mean, At least Chinese youth are more desperate. They have more will. They, they want to fight. They want to... You know, because the chances are very rare here in China, it's very competitive, so many brilliant young people working, so you have to bring your A game, otherwise there's no way for you to realize your dream. But I do think that nowadays the Chinese youth have this concept of the Chinese dream that I can be whatever I want to be, I can do whatever the job I, I do, and I can still make money on it. There are mm -hmm. so many examples in, in different industries, uh, different uh, key opinion leaders, they mm -hmm. have set examples for the youth. So I definitely I believe that there's a stronger sense of confidence and uh, will for achieving their dreams. I, I, but I don't want to compare the Chinese youth with the American youth because I think the American youth, they also ha mm. are very well, you know, uh, ambitious and they want right. to have their dreams too. Right, that's mm. a very fair point there. And yeah. I think we have to bring into perspective uh, the kind of uh, uh, GDP growth that, uh, yeah. you know, exactly. we have experienced in China vis-a-vis -vis wha what has happened in the United States. For instance, since the 1990s, the U.S.'s per capita GDP grew by two point two and a half half percent mm -hmm. uh, yeah, to, uh, about two, two and a half times, yeah. whereas in China, the GDP growth was uh, 25 times. Mm. So indeed, uh, you know, yeah. that is the difference in circumstances. Anastasia, right. from the Chinese people, you know uh, how ambitious are they, how hopeful are they about sure. what they can achieve. Right. And actually, um, like I've been, um, I've been in the news for quite a while, and I can say that, well, actually the concept of Chinese dream has been invented just recently. While in the United States, for example, the concept of American dream it has been there for like, for, for, for many, 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 many years. Mm -hmm. right. So like for China, this is something new. For example, the American people maybe some of them already like lost hope in the American dream, in so-called American dream. But mm -hmm. the Chinese people, since this is like a new concept, they still have a faith in it. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like I wanted to say, um, also like being, being in the news and having to deal with the news every day, um, I can say that the government actually encouraged a lot um, the progress of 
um, young people. For example, they introduced politics, let's say, for, for the startup companies, for example, like in mm -hmm. Zhongguan Sun, mm -hmm. or like um, all, all over China, actually, not only in Beijing, but also like in Shenzhen mm -hmm. and uh, other cities as well. Mm -hmm. So, and Chinese people, maybe they feel inspired that they have so many opportunities, and then they tend to strive for more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, th there is another um, very interesting point, is the feeling that the Chinese youth want to break away from um, um, what they call freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, this uh, author, Zach uh, Dick World, wrote in a book on China's young youth and suggested that Chinese millennials, unlike their, unlike their um, American counterparts, actually think that uh, um, instead of believing in um, freedom in the Western sense, the Chinese young people want have to have freedom from thousands of years of cultural strictures and uh, familial obligations, mm -hmm. including the intense pressure to perform well in exams, entering a prestigious university, lend a high paying job, buy an apartment, find a suitable marriage partner, mm -hmm. produce an heir and eventually care for their aging parents. So um, what is the, why is the concept of freedom different? Is it d different mm. uh, in the eyes mm. of the Chinese youth mm. and in their international counterparts? So I, mean I think it's becoming different because, uh, like, because first of all, as I said, there's just a possibility for them to get more freedom. And now we are seeing so many young people, they choose different paths. Some of them become monks even uh, after they graduate from a very mm. prestigious university. And mm. some of them just, as you said, become mm. entrepreneurship or some different other stuff. So I think also it's become the standard for getting successful. It's so different. It's so various nowadays. Mm. It's not only about getting those you know, high scores mm -hmm. or the high paid uh, jobs. So it's because of the tolerance of society has become much more advanced than before. And mm. that's why we're allowing these different possibilities to, mm. to, to, to take place and happen. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, and your take? Yeah, the concept is definitely different. Here in China, especially for the youth, the freedom, well, sometimes means that the freedom to choose the university they, they want to go, the freedom to choose the people that they want to fall in love with and to get married with. Well, not long ago, the Chinese youth have to marry someone their parents pick. Mm -hmm. So that's so-called the freedom for choosing. Or, or we're expected mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah, we're expected to do that. Mm -hmm. And you, you have to get married by certain age, and you have to have w kids by certain age. You have to have houses. You have to buy mm -hmm. it, otherwise there's no way for you to get married. So the Chinese youth feels that a kind of burden as kind of a prison for them that they want to break away from. And nowadays, they're actually you know, taking actions. And more and more people are getting married late and then they are renting houses instead of buying houses. Mm -hmm. They like to spend money on traveling rather than just paying the mortgages. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are, I think, also a positive examples for Chinese youth to become more independent. And uh, I think that's the freedom they want, at, at least at this point. So it's more personal freedom, it's right? personal In freedom. Personal life freedom. Anastasia, your right. understanding of the difference here? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, because I come from Russia, so uh, Russian society is also very traditional. It's mm. like Chinese. So in Russian, in Russian concept of uh, like leading a traditional life, you have to graduate for the, from the university, you have to find a job, and then you have to get married and have kids, just like in China. Um, so I think that nowadays, because Chinese people have a lot of possibilities of coming abroad, going abroad, going to the West, for example, where the values are slightly different, uh, where people do not have this pressure of getting married like at a very early age, and maybe Chinese people, when they have like when they go abroad, um, they see okay like life can be different. Mm. For example, for me as well, because I come from Russia, from a very traditional society as well, and when I come abroad, I also feel like, okay, life really can be different. Mm. Mm. Uh, in China, but I, what I find is in China, life is very different, yes. right? Mm. Right, extremely diverse. Mm. You don't probably see on the mainstream media so much, mm. but if mm. you go on the internet, if yes. you go on the blogs, if you go on the social media, go on these uh, video yes. uh, live streaming websites, mm. It's a totally different world out there. It so is different. Yeah, w what has happened? I mean, we're talking about uh, very, very uh, authentic, very, very mainstream values such as patriotism, mm. you mm -hmm. know, uh, progress, loving your country, mm -hmm. and, and all of that. And then you have like a totally different uh, spiritual world there. So, yes. what is happening here? What is can people mean? understand it? <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, I think they can understand, but I think the traditional thing is still there, it's just like different formality mm -hmm. of caring and expressing it, mm -hmm. because we're still, like for the patriotism that you mentioned for some of the, you know, the other traditional values, we're still, you know, yeah, tightly sure. upholding it, it will still have it, it's just mm -hmm. different formality. For mm -hmm. instance, like when we, like because we are all followers of the ocean, right, mm -hmm. when I was younger, <laughs> I wanted to, like, 
Because one of the speech that when she took part in an international speaking English mm. contest is the Mira and I. So for mm. followers like my age, mm. what we do is we listen to the tape of that again mm. and again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for many of the younger generation, maybe it's different. So I'm just saying we're st we still have those solid stuff. It's just the different ways to pursue it and the different ways to 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 express it. So mm. the freedom is like the different the freedom and di to make a difference. I think yes. that's the vital thing. Yeah. 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 Actually, cool. before coming up on the show, I was just thinking, how can I just summarize the features? Of the Chinese used in one word, mm. and I find that it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. So use that word impossible. Yeah, impossible. <laughs> yes, uh, the Chinese used are now refusing to be put in one box. It's so different, uh, but I like it. It's just like a rainbow. Everyone can shine with their different colors, mm -hmm. and I do strongly agree with Zoe. We we do hold all those traditional values, uh, patriotism, and helping each other online, right. and then like uh, all this kindness. Uh, still there, just in a different way, and it's in a much more, I would say, a down-to-earth way that the youth can understand, mm -hmm. and uh, actually sometimes I'm having trouble with, I'm now about become 30, <laughs> and now I look at my cousin, like only 10, yeah. he's looking at there something, two I, generations I couldn't tell what's going on, but I, I can see behind that thing is the same. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, we still always look up to you as yeah. a well, model. <laughs> let's, let's move to something else there. You make me s sound a little bit, uh, feel a little bit old there. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay, Anastasia, I have about 30 seconds. Um, do you think that there is, it's really too diverse to be characterized using one word for the Chinese youth? Or is it, you know, just normal? Well, um, actually, <coughs> I think it's really quite hard to, to, to make up with um, one word to characterize the Chinese youth. But it's, it's quite different from, okay, so we have like, if comparing with the Russian society, we have a lot of similar points as mm -hmm. well. We have like a lot of like, differences as well, yeah. which I discovered yeah. being here in China. Yeah, okay. Well, it's a, it's a very long topic, but we have to leave it there. Many thanks to mm -hmm. my uh, three guests, uh, uh, Ailey, a Chinese author, commentator, and online celebrity, mm -hmm. Anastasia, a Russian student of international journalism and editor at uh, people.cn, and uh, Zoe Ying, my colleague here uh, with uh, CGTN. And that is it for this edition of The Point uh, with me, Liu Xin. Uh, as always, I wanted to give you my point, and I would like to quote from a, a point, a, a poet actually, uh, that is attributed to uh, William Shakespeare. It is said to be from Passionate Pilgrim, and it goes like this Crabbed age and youth cannot live together. Youth is full of pleasance, age is full of care. Youth like summer morn, age like winter weather. Youth like summer brave, age like winter bear. Age, I do abhor thee. Youth, I do adore thee. But I wonder here, where is the divide? These are my lines. My daughter tells me I'm old, but my parents still treat me like a little kid. So age and youth is more a state of mind than an actual number, and we can all be old or young, depending on our choice. That is it for this edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin, as always. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle The Point with LX. Download the application called CGTN to watch the show on your mobile devices or go to YouTube and look for CGTN The Point. Thanks for watching. You've got The Point.